Good afternoon, presidents, ministers, friends of the Arctic, and uh, I'm especially grateful to the government of, of Greenland that made it possible for me to come here today. Uh, allow me to present myself first. I am uh, the chairman of the Protect Sápmi Foundation, but I am also a member of the Arctic Economic Council, where I represent the, the Sámi Council. Uh, I have also an interest in, in, in the World Economic Forum Global Agenda Council on, on the Arctic, and I used to be managing director of the Swedish National Reindeer Herders Association. And besides that, I work professionally today with business development. I'm going to talk about my ex personal experience from working within Sápmi, the land of the Samis. Sápmi is an area in, in Scandinavia encompassing four nations, parts of Sweden, parts of Norway, parts of Finland, and parts of, of uh, Russia. Uh, we have a quite different situation from what we hear from Greenland and from North America. We do not have land titles. We do not have the rights to subsurface resources. It means that every industrial project, in a way, uh, is a competing uh, uh, project to our traditional trades like the reindeer husbandry. The Sami cultural landscape, oops, lost a picture here, uh, is very old. There should have been a, a picture of, of modern reindeer husbandry as well. We see rock carvings from the, from the Alta uh, area, and uh, we see reindeer corrals, and we see a boat and fishing, and we see a, a modern fishing boat. But it is about 7,000 years between the pictures, and there are probably no other industries in Europe equally old. As we have heard before, uh, we are standing in front of a lot of, of uh, challenges there is something about my presentation, so some of the pictures are getting lost. But anyway, uh, we are standing in front of, of a lot of challenges, and uh, the melting of the ice creates uh, the possibilities to find resources to a level we haven't seen before in the Arctic. About 22% of the Earth's oil and gas uh, resources are probably to be found in, in the Arctic, besides all the minerals that we have heard of before. All this creates challenges, as we have heard before, to both SAPMI and to the Arctic. Challenges how we should cope with mining, with windmills, with roads and infrastructure, with forestry, with hydropower plant, tourism, shipping, predators, and, and it's a problem we also have in, in Scandinavia. This is a very time-consuming activity. Uh, a typical reindeer herding district spends about 10 to 50 contacts each month due to competing land interests. It's, they spend up to 40 hours a month traveling and meeting with external interests, uh, industrial projects, and, and the time for, for dialogue is very limited, uh, and the issue is often very complex, and you have to ask yourself who helps uh, the indigenous right holders in these processes. But there are also challenges for companies with interest in SAPMI. Who do you get correct information about indigenous right holders? Who do you talk to? How do you perform your indigenous right due diligence that you are supposed to do according to the OECD guidelines? Where do you get knowledge concerning traditional knowledge, which is, which is the driving force in many of the traditional traits and livelihoods? And how do you guarantee a fair, free, prior, and informed consent process, as you should do according to the United Nations Declarations of the Right of Indigenous People or the International Tribal Convention 169? And as an industrialist, what can you do in order to speed up the project process and make the shareholders more happy? In the Chinese lang language, there is a, word, a concept for crisis, Wei Ji, which consists of two parts a dangerous situation and chance for possible development. And we have to cope with both. We have to see the danger, but we do also have to see the possibilities. So what is then Protect Sápmi? Well, we are a Norwegian-based foundation. It was founded by the Swedish and Norwegian Reindeer Herders Association. We are predominantly working in Norway, and we, we work to bring capacity 
to Sami right holders in their contacts, in their encounters with developers with competing land interests. When you're doing that, uh, you need strategies for cooperation between the indigenous peoples and industry. Uh, you have to have a human right-based approach. You have to work with capacity building. You have to work with the concept of free, prior, and informed consent, FPIC. You have to see if you can form a social license to operate to, to the industry. And we work a lot also with stewardship. When you're struggling for sometimes survival and sometimes for cooperation, you have to choose your methods. And basically, you can choose between conflict or dialogue. We prefer to work with dialogue, but sometimes that doesn't work, and then only conflict remains. When we, when we work with the right holders, we often work with a, a, a model consisting of, of two steps, a negotiation model. Uh, we have a process agreement, and we have a main agreement that we work with. The first step is the process agreement, which aims to bring capacity to the community, the right holders, which means that they have to be free in the process, which is the F in the FPIC. It doesn't mean that, they, that you accept the project. The agreement should also be done as early as possible, which is prior. We give the framework on, on how to perform the assessments and how to engage the communities in order to get to, to be informed. And we might lay the foundation for the coming dialogue that might lead up to, to consent. The main agreement is a long-term agreement between the parties which could encompass, encompass benefit sharing, terms of reference for future corporations, uh, terms for conflict resolution and mitigation measures, and how to clean up after the industrial period is over. So, but why should companies bother to take part in, in processes like this? Well, the international uh, auditing company Ernst & Young are annually giving out reports uh, of different topics, and this one is for, from the mineral industry. And in 2014, they elevated this, the uh, the social license to operate to third place on its list of the greatest business risks for mining industry. It was, on, the, it was only the, the risk of, of lack of capital and, and lack of productivity that had a higher risk. So you could say that social license to operate have been integrated in many corporate social responsibility products. And here you see some of the trademarks uh, that you might recognize that have a social license to operate or at least a sustainable behavior uh, incorporated in these marks. I also said that we work with stewardship. And what is then stewardship? I saw the word stewardship in the WWF's presentation. Well, stewardship is an approach and a system that combines financial success with social and environmental responsibility. So it's a system for corporate citizenship, an approach that is based on common and shared values and practice by companies, individuals, organizations, communities, and, and competent authorities. So it's not only values, you also have to practice the stewardship. Do we have that kind of, of, of activities in the Arctic? Well, this picture is really corrupt. I'm, I'm losing text. Uh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, so I have to improvise a bit. Well, uh, I started to, to count and I stopped when I reached 20 different instruments for, for corporate social responsibility. Uh, and besides that, we also have uh, international law relevant for the Arctic. But why should companies be interested in, in working with these kinds of, of instrument? Well, I discussed with uh, the president of IKEA last autumn, and he said that in 2020, IKEA will not buy a single piece of wood if it's not certified from, resourceable, from responsible resources. And in this case, they are referring to the Forest Stewardship Council. But is this enough? Uh, will those systems really be enough to, to to safeguard uh, the interest in the Arctic? No, we don't think so. We think that we need to develop a stewardship in the Arctic that is uh, 
combines a balance between ethical values with business values. Uh, that is a system based on geography, not industrial branch. And there is actually now a process going on within the Arctic Economic Council in order to develop a system for an Arctic stewardship. And uh, I'm part of that process. It is now out for questioning among the, among the members. I stop there. Thank you.